Uh, Mr. Clyde from Georgia is now recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Director Ray, uh, we know that through various reporting, including the June 8th Senate report, the FBI's Norfolk Field Office disseminated a January 5th report that was uh, disseminated to Capitol Police through the Joint Terrorism Task Force. We also know that the Capitol Police analyst who obtained a copy of the Norfolk report forwarded it to their supervisor, but it went no further. So would you agree that the Capitol Police should be here answering questions about why they seem to have not taken this report seriously and prepared accordingly? Yes or no? I really can't speak for the committee's decisions about who it calls and uh, as witnesses. Certainly, I agree with your description of, of what we did in terms of providing the report to the Capitol Police. Okay. Are you aware that Acting Chief Pittman served as the Assistant Chief of the Capitol Police's Intelligence Division at the time of the riots? Uh, I, I've heard that uh, in connection with this hearing just, just over the course of the afternoon here today. Okay. So as a leader of an intel agency, does it give you pause that Pittman, the very person responsible for coordinating and approving the Capitol Police's own intelligence assets, <clears throat> assets that led to poor decision making, failed to ensure that all rank and file officers have been properly briefed, regularly updated, and prepared to manage the events of this six as the law enforcement officer here? Does that give you pause? Does that concern you, sir? Well, Congressman, I, I certainly understand why you're asking the question, but I, I really don't feel comfortable uh, armchair quarterbacking another law enforcement head. Okay. Well, I, it certainly gives me pause, especially when, as was previously mentioned, she drew a 92% no confidence vote in February from the department's union. Um, this next question is for all the witnesses, please. Uh, Director Ray, you first, then um, Lieutenant General uh, Pyatt and General Flynn. Uh, did we have the ability to prevent a capital breach on the 6th? In other words, oh, would better preparation have prevented the breach that did occur? I'm sorry, Congressman, there was a little bit of cross chatter there. Would you mind repeating your question? Okay. All right. I'll repeat that question. Did we have the ability to prevent a capital breach on the 6th? In other words, would better preparation have prevented the breach that did occur? Uh, certainly, I think it's within the United States' power with all the agencies working together uh, and with proper warning to have prevented January 6th. And I know from the FBI's end, we're determined to do our part to make sure it never happens again. Okay. For, for, for each of the, the generals, Lieutenant General and General Flynn, do you agree with that? Congressman, I think what we say, what, how we secured the inauguration, that yes, absolutely, if we would have had an integrated security plan, lead federal agency, shared warnings and indicators and intelligence, the power of, of the police forces within the district and the support from the National Guard, absolutely. Okay. Congressman, I, uh, Thank you. I, echo, I echo what General Pyatt uh, uh, mentioned there upon reflection of what happened on the January 6th. Okay, so with better preparation, we certainly would not have had this issue. Uh, so would you consider the events that led up to the breach of the Capitol a failure of law enforcement leadership? The question, and that is for... Um, I'll, go, I'll go first. I'll go first. I'm, again, I'm, I'm just same answer as I gave before. I'm just not really comfortable weighing in on other people's leadership at the, in charge of their own agencies. Okay. Um, I mean, it's got to be a failure of somebody's leadership here. All right. <clears throat> then lastly, actually, Director Ray, um, on another topic, we've seen in media reports where thousands of citizens' personal tax information has recently been leaked from the IRS. Is that a felony? Financial taxpayer information is a felony last time I checked. All right. Would you commit to the American people that the FBI will fully investigate this leak until the source of the leak is found? Uh, I will commit that I understand we have recently received a referral from the IRS, and I will commit that we will look at it carefully and take appropriate steps uh, as appropriately predicated and authorized. All right. To restore confidence in the Amer uh, to the American people that, that the IRS can be secure with their personal information? Certainly, we, we all want the IRS to be secure uh, in their information. Absolutely. Okay. We know that at 3.04 p.m. that Chris Miller provided verbal approval for full activation of the D.C. National Guard, 1,100 total. 
We also know, according to the Senate report, that the Capitol Police of its 1,840 officers employed on the 6th had 1,214 sworn officers on site at 2 p.m. and 1,457 officers on site across the entire 24-hour period. Of the 1,214 officers, the Capitol Police is on record or noting that it was only able to account for the location of 417 officers on the 6th and it could not account for the remaining 797. If the Capitol Police had close to its 1,800 officers on duty that day, 600 more than were in the complex at 2 p.m., and a little over half of what the National Guard um, deployed, would that have helped prevent a breach of the Capitol? Director Ray, that's for you. Really address that question. That, that may be better directed to other agencies. The time of the gentleman. All right, thank you. I yield back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it according to investigators? They insist. He was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did that. Last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. 
Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings in cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. I don't agree with it. I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th, and they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So, um, is white supremacy? It, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day to day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure, it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.